sometimes you have extremely eminent lovers who are proven themselves beyond a shadow of a doubt. When they tell you something, you say, okay. Example, the Dalai Lama's personal root group. And these are two men that the Dalai Lama himself prostrates to. The Dalai Lama prostrates to a Buddha and these two men, not to you and me. My meaning is for the Dalai Lama to prostrate to them. It's incredible. Why? When someone of very high attainment is prostrate to someone of lower attainment, it's a demerit for that person. It's very, very powerful demerit. That's why people of higher attainment, people of vows, or people of tantric practice, or realize, we put them on thrones, we put them higher, we don't sit on the same level. Why? When we sit on the same level, or we show arrogance, and we don't show, we, we show this kind of, I'm saying this to you, it actually is an obstacle to our attainments. Okay? So what happens, that's the reason why we put them on a higher place, we put sills, we put robes, we put beautiful decorations, we put them higher, why? To celebrate the attainments. Why? To make an infinity to gain those attainments. His holiness Dalai is a very highly attained being. For him to prostrate to anyone is not simple. You don't just say, oh, I'm a great master, you prostrate to me, I'm your teacher. No. Why? It's highly attained. For a highly attained being to prostrate to you, it would be a very big demerit for you. It would take away a lot of merit. So that's why when a highly realized being comes, or an attained being comes, or a nun, or, or someone that holds vows, or, or practices tantra, that, you know, like a mosque or whatever, we send them, we show respect, we prostrate, or we make beautiful thrones, we make beautiful places, we take care of the house. Why? It's to facilitate them to, take, to gain their attainments, facilitate us to gain their attainments. Okay, that's one. Number two, his whole the Dalai Lama has ten shots. Ten shots means debate assistance. And some of them can even go and receive teachings from distant lineages and distant teachers. He can have eight or nine or ten, ten shots. Ten shot. T-S-E-N-S-H-A-D. Their assistance is not the Dalai Lama's guru. So, for example, let's say that I'm a high Lama. You can't expect me to run around to that, run here, run there, run there, and go to all kinds of places to find, you know, um, teachings that are near extinct. So let's say she's my ten shot, you're my ten shot, you're my ten, you're four. So she will go to that place make offerings to that Lama, receive the teachings, come back and offer it back to me. So for her to offer back to me, I wouldn't consider her my guru or my assistant to find that lineage. Why? The Buddhist teachings must come from a live person. That's called a lineage. So actually, so Shirley would go and get the teachings from, let's say, that she lives, you know, 5,000 miles away. So you go there, you receive the teachings, and then you come and you give it to me. So you would offer to me. So how would you give the teachings? You wouldn't sit on the throne and say, okay, you know, you're on the guru now. You would say, I offer this to you. Why would you offer it to me so that I can sit on the people? So that's a tension. So with the Dalai Lama's tutors, there's only two. There are some people and some Lama say, oh, this was Dalai Lama's guru, that's Dalai Lama. Just because, yeah, there are, there are teachers out there who gave one or two teachings or one or two, you know, obscure lineages or lineages that were lost to the Dalai Lama, and they, they can be considered the teachers. But in Tibetan society, there's only two tutors. That title is given to only two people. The tutor is called Yongzin. Y-O-N-G. D-Z-I-N Yongzin. Only two. And that comes the senior Yongzin, or the senior tutor. Y-O-N-G. D-Z-I-N. The senior Yongzin comes from the great, renowned, Drakon Gosling Monastery. That is his holiness, Captain Dikmanji, who is a master of Sutra and Tantra who was a previous summoned throne holder, and his previous lives also emanated as Dalai Lama's tutors. And he is considered a living emanation of Yamaka. No one in our system will say he's not a living emanation of Yamaka. Renowned, I have met him myself. The second tutor, the junior tutor, comes from the great monastery of Alinshate, that's my monastery. And this great master, is considered an emanation of Yuruka. Some consider Vajrayini, but you have to understand Vajrayini, Yuruka is considered as one. He's an emanation of Yuruka, and his lineage stems back to Shakyamuni Buddha. He was the chariot driver of Buddha Shakyamuni himself. So his incarnations has been coming for 2,500 years. These great masters, his whole generality, is a direct emanation of Yuruka. These two masters are the Dalai Lama's gurus. That's there's no no doubt. At all. Now these two tutors have many teachers and geshes, but they have their root lama. 
their root mama that they both prostrate to is Kalonkarinchi. His Holiness Kalonkarinchi is the root lama of the two tutors. That means every single teaching, every single lineage and tender transmission and oral transmission of the two tutors came from His Holiness Kalonkarinchi. Can you imagine how renowned he is? And this Kalonkarinchi has produced two students. Both became the guru of the Dalai Lama. And hello. And look at the Dalai Lama, look what he does today. Look how much work he does. Look how he benefits people. I mean, if Dalai Lama today had a dream and Tara came to me and told me this, this, I'll do it. You know why I'll do it? I can't prove it. But look at everything else the Dalai Lama does. See this, even in old paintings in Tibet, this is the Dalai Lama, this is Kepti Lingwarji, and this is Holy Street Energy. That's it. No one else. You don't see any other painting, anybody else that's his guru. Nobody else. So these two renowned teachers, Lingwarji and Triyarji, that's Yamataka and Yoga, that's Avalokiteshvara, and you look very I was trying to stick myself somewhere there, but it didn't fit. Then we'll over. Okay, now, their teacher that they prostrated to was Pavokarinji. Pavokarinji, when he gave teachings, thousands of people showed up in Tibet, thousands. They would walk for one month from distant parts of Tibet to come to his teachings. And Pavokarinji was considered fully realized or became one with the Buddha. When he gave initiations and teachings, during the initiations, there's a, there's a part where he actually asked the wisdom beings to come and dissolve into you, plant the seeds in the black and you know People will actually share. This was told to me by my, one of my teachers in America, Kishinogas. He's in his meetings now. He told me that when Paul, I mean, these are people who were there, you know, when he gave initiations. People will share. And Geshe was one of these scholars who is no nonsense, don't talk about dreams, don't talk about, he doesn't want to do divinations, he doesn't want to talk about anything mystical, it's just direct study and scholastic things. He doesn't want to talk about magic. So once Mark, he stood and he tells you that. And he says that people in the audience actually saw Paul Mugur, which is a third eye. So people in the audience thought, oh my god, why does he have to be honest? And people actually see people shaking in the audience. I mean, these are monks. They weren't epileptic, by the way. <laughs> yeah, they weren't. They weren't epileptic, like, you know, having a heavy You know, everybody in the audience can be epileptic. On top of that, Pablo Guruji is renowned. Renowned for being the guru of all gurus in Tibet. The guru of all Gidu Palams. The scholars, the masters, the abbots, the teachers, the mighty tools of Bandit Sarah Pekun, all attended his teachings. And the two imperial tutors, all attended his teachings. Now it was he, he, who in front of many people would go to certain pilgrimage sites in Lhasa and touch statues. And many people witnessed that are alive today. The statues would read or sweat or talk. Many people. Especially here with the Rajapati statues. And it was he who, untraditional of Gilupas, because Gilupas are like, you know, prove it. But with Pabuka, nobody said prove it, they said yes, sir. So what happens is, with him, he had a vision of Rajapati. And Rajapati told him that it would be very beneficial to promote the Rajapati teachings. You say, that's obvious, she's going to promote her own teachings. Come on, she doesn't have ego. So it couldn't be an ego trip that she's promoting her own teachings, can it be? And some more, there's other Buddhas who say, snap and say, hey, make this ego, move over. Why do you promote yourself? Why don't you promote me? Not possible. Vajikini doesn't have ego, and then there are more Buddhas who stop her if she was an ego trip. <laughs> so it couldn't be right. Vajikini actually appeared to Pabba herself and said that my teachings, these particular set of practices, will be very, very beneficial to many people in the future, especially during the Kali Yuga or the degenerate times where attachments and materialism is very strong. And I give you the blessings, I authorize you, that anybody who receives teachings from you, Pabong Kalam, and four generations down, have my promise you will achieve Kacho Heaven in seven mountains. Because in Tantra, when you receive highest yoga Tantra, Hiruka Yamastaka, if you hold your vows, you have Buddha devotion, you do your practice, you do your succession, and you do your talk within 14 lifetimes, you will attend Buddha. It is promised. It is promised. It doesn't have to be in this planet. It can be somewhere else. So, it's promised. But within the Vajigini Tantra, it's also the same thing 14 nine times, but it was promised to Pabongka Rinchi, 7. So that means Pabongka, 1, 
his disciple two, his disciple three, his disciple four. So any of these four after that is back to fourteen again. So Pablo gave it to Trajanaji. Trajanaji gave it. Pablo gave it to thousands of people, and Pablo gave it to Trajanaji. Trajanaji gave it to thousands of people, and then Trajanaji gave it to Sonaji, who gave it to thousands of people. I received it to Sonaji. So I'm the fourth. Am I popularizing myself? No. I have many people out there who support. I'm not the only one. But in Malaysia, I'm the only one. Sorry. So I'm within the four. So let's say that I give the initiation to Jenny, and in the future she gives the initiation. Sorry, it's back to fourteen. But with me, it's still seven. So you kind of get fifty percent discount. <laughs> no, I'm, I didn't realize that, but you know, when I received the energy later, later years, twenty years later, or later, I read it. So wow, that's why I hold these teachings particularly very special, and I train up my students, and I need the center after Kichar, Kichar, or Vajpayee Center. That's why I give people Vajpayee statues. Or some people throw bitch in the beginning. I won't throw, I won't throw any names. That's why I give everybody Vajpayee. I promote it. I name our center after her. Why? I follow all this image. Why is that? Why is that? Seven is better than fourteen. There's many reasons I do that. Then I look at your clouds, and I said, Oh my God. Imagine them doing, you know, more complicated deities with a lot of entourage and a lot of meditations and very thick solids. Forget it. They already threw BFs about Dhammi Pachaman we mix them off. See, forget about the video, it's like 40 pages. So, why? I look at the whole room, I look at the people, I look at the place, and I look at her power, and I look at what she represents. It matches everything perfectly. So I try to get my people towards that. Why? I have other practices. She's not my main practice. She's not my main, you know. She's one of the things that I have to do to get to people. Because if I don't do it myself, I can't give it to anybody. It's like exercise. You don't exercise, you're finished. So you gotta do your mental exercise every day. She's not my main practice, but it's beneficial for everybody. Why do I keep her statue? It'll be beneficial for everybody. Why do I say I want a chapel? It'll be beneficial. So what I try to lead our people to is her practice. That's what I try to lead our people to. Everything goes to that. So why? Why is a young adult beneficial? He is very beneficial. I love him. I think he's great. Anything on fire with animals head, give it to me. I love it. I love pagan things. You know, Hiroka, I love him too. He's great. So, what's my point? My point is, Pabonka had this vision. And then he told people, I had this vision. And Bajibini said that to me. Everybody said, yes, sir. Then I was like, hey, we're going to check it out, Pabonka. Why? Everybody became a student. And a lot of people, by listening to his teachings and practicing what he said, became very attained. Very, very attained. All Gelukpa lineages today, all high Gelukpa lamas, all Gelukpa teachers in the world, stand with the impact of the Even the practices that we do today, like Yamantaka, Vajmini, all that is written by the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes? That's right. The Dalam's personal lineage goes back to the Holy so if you criticize Pabunga, you criticize Shijan. If you criticize Pabunga, you criticize Shijan. If you criticize Dalama. Then is Shijan, is Dalama the only elite student of Shijan? No. 99% of the Geshis out there in this world and the Lamas out there in the world, direct and indirect, are students of Shijan. That's right. Big and small. Lama Sopa is student of Lama Lama Yishi is a direct student of Chitanamaji. Direct. You read his books. You check out his book. You tell him what he says. That's right. All direct. Lama Yishi's main group is Chitanamaji and Sonji. And in fact, Sonji was invited to America the first time by Lama Yishi and sponsored by him. That's right. My teachers, Geshe Turi Gels, are students of Sonji and Chitanamaji. My root guru, Geshe Kenzo Losan Hachirochi of New Jersey, has passed away from ceremony. His root, he's a root disciple of Pabunka himself and Chujanamji. All my other teachers are all disciples of Chujanamji. They're all sent to So when anybody criticizes Pabunka, they criticize the Dabao. If they criticize Chujanamji, they criticize the Dabao. Why? How can you criticize? How can you love the son and hate the father? You cannot. So people don't realize that. 
People today look at it and say, oh, which is clear? Who's your guru? Who's not? Who's good? Who's not good? No, no, I love Dalai Lama, but I don't like this guru. I don't like that guru. This one's clean. This is not good. Oh, you, your guru is that, so you must be bad. That's very bad. That's very, very bad. Why? How can you criticize the Diddish laws? And when you do your sadhana, example, when you do your Yamataka sadhana or your Vajagini sadhana, in the Yamataka, Vajagini sadhana, Yeruka sadhana, you have to mention Triyanji Bhagavad every single day. Why? There's a solicitation of the lineage groups you have to recite every day. And there it go. Every day. And they don't put their title, they don't put their title, Pabongpa or Trijan, they put their monk's name. Pabongpa Rinch's name is Dejini. You'll see about Yuri Sada, Hiro Kasada, Dejini, Hiro Kasada. And after that is Losan Ishi. Losan Ishi is Trijan. For myself, after that, Losan Tsunju has kept his song. You have to remember their names. So people out there saying, oh, you know, um, if you're associated with this Lama, you're doing this practice and it's not good. Wrong. Wrong. Definitely wrong. Definitely wrong. Definitely. And these days, there's a lot of politics out there. There's a lot of politics. If you're associated with this Lama, you're doing a bad practice. If you're associated with this Lama, you're doing a bad practice. How can you say things like that? How can you? How can you say that? Then that means that what Pabuka Ruchi and Trija Ruchi talked was, part of it was very good. And the other part was bad. So how can one part be good, the other part be bad? Either they're Buddha or three-quarter Buddha. So if you're going to criticize what Trijanamchi taught, what Pahumamchi taught, as a basis that this was good, this not good, it was the same thing for Dalai Lama. So that means Dalai Lama's lineage is a pure. Because he received it from Trijanamchi. Impossible. You cannot. If you go into debate with him, it was. That's why I respect all of them. You know? Some people say, oh, uh, look at this Look at this Lama. This Lama has this Guru. This Guru is associated with that. That's bad. He's got that Lama. That Lama is associated with it. That's good. So this Lama mm, is iffy because he's associated with that Lama. I'm like, what? How can you say that? How can you dissect what's good and bad in the Lama? How can you make up that kind of rumor? How can you be an ordinary person judge or achieve? The whole Sangha and the whole High Lamas has picked him and then thrown him and said he's a Ruchi. Then you lay people, you don't have anything to criticize him. How can you do that? When you criticize the Lama, you also criticize the people that have thrown him. Why? You're saying indirectly they're mistaken. Very simple. Indirectly you're saying they're mistaken. The abbots and High Lamas have thrown him. Impossible. So, like that, today there's a lot of politics because why? Sorry to say, there's a lot of center students thinking crap going on. I want my center to go, I want my center to go good, I want sponsorship, I want help. So what? They can't say that directly, so they, they put down the different laws. How do they put them down? Oh, your lineage is not pure. Oh, their practice is not pure. They're not practicing pure things. So everybody's like, ooh, let's go to the pure center. On TC. And then what I want to say is all the pure and impure centers today stem from the same laws. It all goes back to Saranji, Trijanji, and Pabaranji. Hello? So in Pabongpa and Trijanji, what? There's a part that's not pure, they're teaching pure teachings, it's a part that's pure. So when you meditate on a pure way, you become a devil. When you pure way, you become a devil. Hello! It's, it, it's improbable. I think they're a or not. How can Pabongpa and turn around and teach something wrong and make a mistake, and then in other meditation, you think that he's a fully right Buddha with no mistake? It cannot be. I mean, you think about that. You think about it. So if people want to criticize a lama for who he worships, and who his lama is to judge him, very wrong. Very, very wrong. And today there's a lot of that going around on the forums, everywhere. I read. Everywhere they criticize. They validate the person teaching to see who their lama is. Yeah, see, not showed me some things I was shocked. They validate that lama to see who their lama is. Once you criticize Sri Janamji, Saranji, and Pabuka, which is lineage, you're criticizing that lama. You're criticizing that lama. Then everything's finished. So that means the Dalai Lama has polluted teachings and unpolluted teachings. That doesn't make sense to me. That's why Lama Dashi, I am totally against. There are Lamas I particularly don't like and I won't go near, but I don't comment or say anything because I'm sorry and I'm not being humble. I don't have the clairvoyance to see who they are. So I keep quiet. Why do I keep quiet politically? No, everybody knows me, I don't keep quiet. But when I don't know something, I keep quiet. Lama Dashi is very serious today. Very, very serious. So people judge a certain teacher today by who their Lama is. So what do you want? You want 
you, for example, if I have a teacher and then you don't like my teacher, I'm supposed to give up allegiance to my teacher just to make you happy? Not logical. So if I give up my allegiance to this teacher and I say to this teacher that you lie, all my attainments are gone. Why are my attainments gone? Because I lost faith in one of my teachers. Very simple. Very bad. I don't like politics. And I don't like this kind of, you know, covering your evil deeds with so-called pure and impure religion, pure and impure practices. I don't like that at all. And there's a lot of lay people out there who don't study, who have not committed their time, they have not committed their energy, they just became Buddhist, they're walking down the street, and oh, I took refuge on Buddhists, they start getting on forums, they criticize, and they, they go out to centers, they criticize, very bad. And some people are rich, some people have big names, some people are well-known people, and they use that to criticize other lawless people. Actually, they're just more normal lay people. Just because you have money doesn't mean you have the, 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 the authority to judge another teacher. Just because you have money. Just because you're well-known and rich doesn't mean you have the authority to criticize another teacher. And just because you're rich and well-known and you, you're under a high lama doesn't mean you don't collect negative karma when you criticize another lama. So you can be rich and famous and well-known and you can have a, a famous lama that you've taken refuge in. That's your guru. You promote your guru. Fabulous. But you shouldn't promote your guru at the expense of another guru. And if you may be rich and famous and fabulous, and you have a rich and famous and fabulous guru and he's pure, right? That doesn't mean if you criticize another guru, you don't collect negative karma. Show us where and who by authority, what authority that that lama is bad, then you can start criticizing. Even if you got a letter that says that lama is big, bad, and you criticize, you still collect negative karma. Because is that, isn't that contradictory to Buddhist practice? Very simple. So when you criticize that lama, you criticize all the people that enthroned him or authorized him. And you also criticize his students by saying they're stupid, they can't see through him. Very damaging. So is everybody stupid? You're the only smart one because you're rich and you have money? I don't think so. I don't think so. So that means the Lama's stupid. The people who put him on the throne are stupid. And his students are extra stupid. And he's just milking and fleecing them. Oh boy, I wish it was that easy. I'd be rich. You guys are very difficult to fleece. Very difficult. Why? Because you're not stupid. So if anybody criticizes the Lama, they criticize the students, and they criticize their village, and the people that offer us. If you think about it, and these are the people that are like, you know, in cyberspace, hiding out there, and pretending they know everything, but if you meet them, they're like trembling. Uh, that's right. So, what am I telling you? Logic to think. Good. Anybody want to say anything? Say no. It's like that. Very simple. I don't care who you are. If you spend 30 years in the Dharma, then you come and talk to me. So therefore, when His Holiness kept the public origin, told everybody that, oh, I, you know, very humbly, that I had a vision of, you know, Vajrayini, blah, 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 and then she promised that anybody afterwards for four generations would be able to ascend to Kichara Paradise within seven lifetimes. Yeah. Nobody said no. Because everything else he did was perfect. And he produced all these great masters and great teachers who are highly attained. So what's my point? You have within the Kilipa lineage certain lamas that really just totally transcend the, you know, let me check out the teachings are valid kind of system. And one of them was his own Tabuka. And if you ask me why, well, he had total proof, thousands of students, elite masters, a lineage holder, the writer of sadhanas. I mean, all of our sadhanas are written by him. So you're not going to question if he adds one more little thing to it. You know, oh, by the way, if you practice my body, you're going to get to heaven. In seven lifetimes, instead of 14, no one's going to say no. And you see Trudyanji saying to his guru, I, I don't think so, prove it, Pabong Ka. No, it's, it's like, it's too much. I'm sure about to appear to high masters in the future again and again and again. To reinvent herself. We teach. I'm sure that's going to happen in the future. Why? Because what benefits people will change over time. 